Hi, I'm Paul from ETH Zurich, and in this video, I'll tell you about my internship at Meta Reality Labs. We present OrientNet for visual localization in 2D public maps. Humans can orient themselves in the 3D environments using simple 2D maps. Differently, algorithms for visual localization mostly rely on complex 3D point clouds that are expensive to build, store, and maintain over time. We bridge this gap by introducing OrientNet, the first deep neural network that can localize an image with submeter accuracy using the same 2D semantic maps that humans use. OrientNet leverages open and globally available maps from OpenStreetMap, enabling anyone to localize anywhere such maps are available. Our approach estimates both position and orientation by matching a neural bird's eye view with a neural map. It learns end-to-end -to, -end to perform semantic matching with a wide range of map elements. OrientNet generalizes to new datasets captured by augmented reality devices or robots without retraining and yields large improvements over GPS and satellite maps. In this video, we will first learn about common approaches to visual localization. We will then understand how OrientNet works. And finally, we'll get a sense of how well it works in practice. Let's dive in. Applications like augmented reality or robotics need accurate 3D positioning as translation and orientation in a global reference frame. Consumer-grade GPS and compass are not sufficiently accurate and are often unreliable due to multipath effects or magnetic anomalies. Cameras, however, are versatile and accurate. To estimate the pose of this query image, the standard approach finds correspondences between the image and a 3D point cloud reconstructed using mapping images and structure for motion. This approach can be very accurate and scales well to large areas, but faces several limitations. First, building and maintaining 3D maps at the world scale requires expensive sensor fleets. Because these maps encode the local appearance, they need to be updated after major changes like seasons, which requires acquiring new mapping images. Second, simply storing 3D maps is very expensive, because they are made of millions of points, each associated with a high-dimensional visual descriptor. This prevents executing localization on device and instead relies on costly cloud-based services. Last, 3D maps pose privacy risks because their descriptors can be inverted to reveal the appearance of sensitive content in mapping or query images. The research community has recently proposed solutions like scene compression and privacy-preserving descriptors. These, however, consistently impair the robustness and accuracy of localization algorithms. In this paper, we suggest to instead use simpler 2D semantic maps. 2D maps are what humans typically use to find out where they are and to navigate their environment. Mobile map apps are used by billions of people every day. Planimetric maps encode the position and 2D shape of important objects which are represented by points, lines or polygons. Maps from OpenStreetMap are available all around the world for free and are maintained by an active global community. These maps include a wide diversity of objects commonly found in urban areas, such as buildings, parks, trees, benches, trash bins, and many others. When lost in such an environment, humans can easily orient themselves by matching the 2D maps with a mental map derived from visual observation. OrientNet learns to mimic this behavior and can localize in the very same maps that humans use. Using 2D maps has multiple benefits over 3D maps. Thanks to OpenStreetMap, OrientNet enables anyone to localize anywhere for free. Because these maps encode the semantics of the world, but not its appearance, they don't require frequent updates. 2D vector maps are extremely compact and easy to download, which enables on-device localization within large areas and only store public information. How can we localize in 3D using 2D maps? Well, in practice, the gravity direction is often measured by inertial sensors that are ubiquitous in today's devices. It's like the inner ear of humans. Additionally, the vertical position of a camera is often irrelevant because motions in outer spaces are mostly horizontal. Since these devices often compute a local 3D map for tracking, the height can anyway be estimated as the distance to the ground. 
These assumptions overall reduce the problem to estimating a much simpler three degree of freedom pose, as 2D position and heading angle. OrientNet estimates the pose of a quarry image with known camera intrinsics, given OpenStreetMap data for a local area centered at a course location prior, for example, a noisy GPS position. Let's see how it works. First, a convolutional neural network infers a 3D occupancy volume from the image. This occupancy maps image features to a bird's eye view, or BEV, by lifting them to 3D and pulling them vertically. This results in a neural BEV with an associated confidence map. In parallel, the vector map is rasterized into multiple channels and encoded into a neural map. We finally exhaustively match the BEV against the map. We discretize the pose space into positions and angles arranged in a grid. And for each pose, we compute the correlation between the BEV and the map weighted by the confidence. This results in a probability volume of a poses from which we can extract a single estimate. Our internet is trained end-to-end -end by maximizing the likelihood of a ground roof pose. To infer the BEV, we first rectify the image with the known gravity. Each column of pixels then maps to a ray in the BEV, which we discretize in depth planes. To map an image feature to the correct plane, we need to estimate its depth. We instead predict its canonical scale, which we translate to a depth using the known camera intrinsics. This helps generalizing to arbitrary cameras. By predicting a distribution of the scales, our internet learns to infer monocular depth from pose supervision only. Object classes in OpenStreetMap belong to three categories, nodes, lines, and areas. We select the 50 most frequent classes, rasterize each category, and combine them into a high-dimensional neural map. We train a single model that generalizes to unseen locations with arbitrary kinds of images. Using the Mapillary platform, we collect a large crowdsourced dataset of images with ground truth poses captured in 12 cities in Europe and in the US by cameras that are handheld or mounted on cars or bikes. Such visual diversity is key to generalization. Let's now look at some examples. We show the input image and the map, where buildings are shown in blue, roads in red, and so on. We draw the ground roof pose in red and the max likelihood pose in black, which are within 40 cm and 3 degrees. The likelihood is very sharp, but can also encode uncertainties with multiple modes due to symmetries. Predictions are more accurate in areas that exhibit distinctive and well-localized features, like trees and building boundaries in the top example. Predictions have a higher uncertainty otherwise here in the bottom one. We evaluate our internet for driving viewpoints on the KT dataset. The model was not trained with any image from this city, but generalizes well because the map is standardized all around the world. The position error is only 70 cm, despite the lack of distinctive objects. There's mostly buildings and roads visible in these maps. We consider typical augmented reality data captured with ARIA glasses. Our internet provides much more accurate positioning than GPS, here shown in blue, which falls short in urban canyons like downtown Seattle. Semantic maps often do not contain sufficient information to localize a single image with limited field of view. The maps are sometimes spatially inaccurate or are missing some objects. In the top example, trees are clearly visible in the image but not in the map. This makes the localization ambiguous. Lower level features like windows or building entrances are not in OpenStreetMap, so the bottom image cannot be localized. We improve the localization by fusing predictions over multiple frames with known relative pose, which simply amounts to maximizing the joint likelihood. Accumulating more frames reduces the error throughout the sequence, here shown in red. This reduces the ambiguity of multimodal predictions, and here in this example yields errors lower than 30 cm. Look at how the sequence likelihood converges to a single mode as we accumulate predictions from additional frames in the right panel. Fusing GPS signals over time, here shown in orange, is often not reliable because their noise is biased. In contrast, fusing predictions of our internet, here in red, is reliable 
even though the single frame predictions are often multimodal. Here is another example of sequence localization with RU devices in Detroit. Here again, the GPS, shown in blue, jumps over time and is inconsistent, while uh, the sequential prediction in red um, is closer to the ground truth. We perform an extensive quantitative evaluation with both Kitty and ARIA datasets. Here, we plot the ratio of images that are successfully localized within one meter of error. On Kitty, localizing with semantic maps significantly improves ex over existing approaches based on aerial imagery, in which many ground features are not visible. On ARIA data, our internet is more accurate than GPS. The performance remains low, but fusing sequences increases the recall by a large amount. Such additional information does not benefit the GPS. Check out our paper for additional results. To summarize, we demonstrate that 2D semantic maps are an effective representation for visual positioning. Our internet generalizes to augmented reality and robotics data without any retraining and enables anyone to localize anywhere for free. The code is publicly available. Try it yourself with your own pictures. Check out the paper for quantitative results and additional visualizations. Thank you for watching.